If you're self-employed, it's a lot easier to purchase a home than you think. Would it surprise you if 74% of the people surveyed by the Federal Bank of New York said that it was either somewhat or extremely difficult to obtain a mortgage? I mean, and you're, if you're self-employed, you're thinking, well, shoot, it's 100% somewhat or extremely difficult to obtain a mortgage. Well, it doesn't have to be. What you need is a creative lender, somebody who knows the alternative solutions to just tax returns, because that's the standard answer, two years tax returns. And if you've been self-employed for more than five years, then you can get away with one year tax return. But what if you've only been self-employed for one year? Or what if your tax returns don't show any income because your CPA is probably as good as mine and they write off everything that they can, leaving your net income little lackluster to be able to afford a home. Well, I want to go through three alternative ways that we can document your income. I also then want to show you three ways I don't have to document your income at all. And I'm not talking about the DSCR loan. That's for investors, and we all know about that already. And I've done other videos, which we can link down below. But the DSCR loan specifically focuses on the income generated on that rental property. But what if you don't own your owner-occupied property? What if you just want to buy that home first? You feel like your hands are tied and you have no options. I have options, and I have some really good ones. But before I jump in, I want to make sure that you subscribe to our channel, that you like this video, and that you comment down below telling me what you're seeing. Maybe even give me your scenario. I would love to find a solution for you. So let's jump in. What are those three ways? And first, let me remind you and highlight the fact that we only need you to be self-employed for one year. Now, if it's only one year, I do want to see two years of you being in that same industry. Typically, that's a W-2 job, but you only have to be self-employed for one year. So let's talk about those three alternative ways to document it other than your tax returns in the standard way. Well, the first way is bank statements. And I want to start with that one first because it's the most common. It's the one that people jump to first. You can either show 12 months or 24 months of bank statements, and they can either be personal or business bank accounts. And sometimes you've got other monies coming in and out, or sometimes the bank statements aren't as clean as you would like, or they don't quite get you the income that you would like or need to qualify for a home. So is that it? Is it just tax returns or bank statements? Well, we've got a couple of other options. We can now qualify you based on a profit and loss statement. We just need that profit and loss statement to be written by a third party, whether it's your accountant, your CPA, your financial planner, your financial advisor. We need a profit and loss, not audited, but by written by a third party, and it can be only one year. All right, so profit and loss is good, but what if you don't have a CPA? You do your own taxes with TurboTax. Well, I advise you not to do that, number one. But number two, maybe you just don't have somebody else that can do that P&L for you. Well, then we've got another option, and it's your 1099s. Most self-employed borrowers or uh, and business owners get 1099s. It's in all the other magic where we write off all of that income in our expenses where we get into trouble. So we can use your one year of 1099 plus your year-to-date bank statement showing that that income is continuing to come in. Well, all that's pretty cool. So you're thinking, well, shoot, I probably have to put 50% down. But you don't. You can go with as little as 10% down given certain circumstances, 10 to 20 to 25% down. You can have a credit score as low as 600, and this goes up to $4 million loan amounts. Well, that's a pretty wide array of solutions alone. But now what if none of those work? Do you still have options? I have three more options I want to cover that don't require any income documentation at all. In fact, they kind of feel like a DSCR a little bit, where it's just the debt service coverage ratio using that property. Now, it doesn't go that far because you're buying an owner-occupied, but we're looking at other things other than your income. The first one is relatively common. So let's start with that one first. And it's an asset depletion loan. And so really that's just looking at if you say have a, a 1.5, $2 million, $1 million in a investment account, we can use that. And depending on if it's in a retirement account, a non-retirement account, we'll have to discount that for penalties. 
or for variability, and then we can use the balance of that for anything divided by either 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. So I'd take that million dollars and divide it by 360 months or 240 months or even 120 months. I even have a program down to 60 months that gives us that monthly income that qualifies you to purchase the home. That's pretty swift. Well, here's another one, and it's called the ATR in full. So that's your ability to repay. So the only thing that we look at is not dividing it by some number of months, but simply do you have enough in the bank that should you want to, you could cash that investment out and you could pay cash. So can you cover the purchase price and the closing costs? You get an automated approval with the ability to repay loan. That is rock star for somebody who has enough in assets. And then I have a third option. It's called a no ratio loan. This option allows you to put as little as 25% down and to have nine months in reserves and qualify for that owner occupied home. So maybe you don't have enough to buy the home in full in your investment accounts, but you do have enough to put 25% down and cover nine months in reserves. I can do that on the no ratio loan. So here's the bottom line. Being self-employed makes it difficult to purchase a home. Or so we think. There are options. Working with a strategic lender provides pathways through those options. So make sure before you say no and cancel out the opportunity to allow the power of leverage and the power of appreciation and principal reduction to grow your net worth before you say no to yourself, closing the door on buying a home and continuing to rent, please do me a favor, give me a call. That's all I ask. If you choose to go in a different direction, you're not gonna hurt my feelings because I know I opened up doors. Give me a call today. Let's walk through those options and together let's create a path to home ownership. Nicole Ruth with the Ruth team. I look forward to hearing from you.